In December 2020, I dropped a video on Ray Rice's career and more importantly how it ended. The video instantly did great, but once I checked my IG, I had a DM that had me feeling kind of nervous. The message was from none other than Janae Rice herself, the wife of Ray Rice who I of course have to discuss in the video and sometimes when you cover people they're not exactly thrilled about it but here's what she had to say good morning i had a few comments on my page regarding the video you did on ray and i sadly i was quick to delete the comments assuming it was another negative video i just sat here and watched the entire video and i can't thank you enough for telling our story and telling it with as much truth as you know based off our own words and not assumptions, which is unfortunately what we are used to. But also thanks for keeping such a negative situation as positive as you could. Thanks for highlighting the fact that Ray is human and giving me credit for making the choices I made. The video was great. Good luck in your endeavors and be blessed. As a creator, I had a smile on my face this big after that. Of course, I asked for permission to post that comment until this day, it's on my website, on my shout out page. No matter how wholesome, narratives can be extremely dangerous. See, when you tell a good story, people fall in love with the main protagonist. He becomes a role model, an idol, a hero. And then the sequel comes out. Like I mentioned earlier in the story, Ray and Janae met when they were kids. They'd been friends for a long time, but didn't get romantic until late in Ray's college career. He asked her to move to Baltimore with him once he got drafted. And her parents, who Ray was actually incredibly close with, were actually super against the idea. But again, Ray had a very close relationship with her family and even eventually started calling her dad, dad. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that was his pop. Of course, he had already lost his actual father and a father figure, so it makes sense that he kind of sought out that older male, like, mentor, if you will. Anyway, I digress. Her parents eventually agree to it. Janae moves out to Baltimore with Ray. Things are pretty cool for a while. I'm pretty sure the problems were already there. They were already present, but they had not really revealed themselves yet or hadn't really, like, kind of built up to that boiling point. As they got older and Ray had more and more success on the field, things started to change rapidly between the couple. By Janae's own admission, they had kind of developed a contentious relationship as she kind of struggled with the fact that she didn't feel like a top priority in Ray's life. For Ray, he was a young man, very ambitious, and he's trying to get to the top of his sport, so he's very career driven. At this point, this is a, a point of contention in many relationships. This is not unique. If you're in your 30s and married like me, you probably can empathize with this situation. You've experienced this in some form at some point in your life or at some point in your marriage or relationship. But in order to get past this, it takes time and two mature people who actually want to solve the problem. And, you know, over the course of years, y'all will probably work out a, a workable balance. And while empathy allows me to understand where Janae is coming from, it's got to be said that this is a sacrifice made by the families of pretty much every great athlete and coach. Getting to the top of a competitive field takes a major time commitment, which I don't think is news to anyone. And pro sports is one of the toughest fields to get to the top of. Becoming a great amongst the best players the sport has to offer takes an unbelievable time commitment. That's why every Hall of Fame speech always includes an apology to the family for time spent dedicated to the game. I'm not trying to say this is easy to deal with by any means. I'm just saying this is something that's pretty common when it comes to great athletes or great men really in any field. With that said, Ray himself did not make matters any better if you rate and you know you're ambitious and you know you're going to be spending a lot of time putting into your craft trying to be at the top of it you're gonna to have to find some compromises and figure out a way to make your spouse feel valued and important by his own admission at that time Ray was doing pretty much the opposite. Back then, anytime Janae would express wanting some alone time or express the fact that she wanted to be higher on the priority list, Ray would then refer to her as dream killer which is honestly like an energy that, why would you even attach that to your woman though? You feel what I'm saying? Like you, you don't wanna do that, that's a mistake. But sitting and listening to the two talking interviews over the last few years, they admit that their relationship was verbally and emotionally abusive at times, and they didn't try to make this excuse. I'm just saying this, dude, they was young as hell, all right? When you young, this is the type of stuff you do. Also, they were adamant that while yes, it was verbally and emotionally abusive at times, never physical outside of this one, 
incident. Yeah, it's time. Back then, Ray's commitment to the sport showed on the field. Dude was dominant for a time, but his lack of commitment to his relationship continued to drive a wedge between him and Janae. An even bigger wedge was drawn in 2012 when their daughter was born, and Ray actually admits to not being a whole lot of help during that time. Here's what he had to say. I get home, I'm spent. There's no time to talk. I got practice the next day. It got to the point where if she had an issue, I would basically just go silent. There wasn't a lot of yelling, screaming or nothing. I would just wake up, go to practice, then game day gets here. I rush for three touchdowns. The family's over at the house. She still got the problem she's thinking about. And I think I scored three touchdowns today everything's all right. That's funny to hear. Most dudes have probably done this exact same thing outside the three touchdowns. And you can't judge them because it's tough to balance career goals and relationship goals. I've done a decent amount of reading up on this stuff over the past few years and people in their 20s almost never have this down. Like this is something you usually don't get down until later in life when you better establish, you know. But for Ray and Janae, before they ever got to that point, things boiled over. Valentine's Day, 2014. So now that the two were engaged, Janae wanted to do something romantic with her fiance for Valentine's Day. Ray decides instead to plan a group event on Valentine's Day. All the older dudes is like, oh, like they know he's messing up right now. So they drive three hours up to Atlantic City to meet up with a group of people on Valentine's Day. A few hours later, they're in Atlantic City. They're both drunk out of their minds. Once the alcohol starts flowing, the filters go down. And next thing you know, they're in a huge argument, just displaying all of their relationship problems for everybody to hear. Random fun fact, Ray was actually on a cleanse. So he was a super lightweight during this time because he had been detoxing. So it didn't take much drink for him to just be out of there. They continue to argue back and forth, getting louder and louder. Janae at one point gets up, putting her hand in his face it's really escalating and my question is if this was a group thing that ray planned and that's what kind of helped this thing to go ahead and boiled over because that's what the articles say if that's the truth where the hell is the rest of the group and why they not breaking this up like you know what i'm saying i don't know what's going on with that that's weird anyway at one point it gets so bad that the image conscious ray is like all right this can't happen here he gets up he leaves but he stands by the elevator. So eventually, Janae walks up because when she leaves, it obviously she's gonna go to the elevator. So when she comes out, of course, altercation continues. Ray made what they would later refer to as a very vulgar comment. Then Janae stepped onto the elevator and Ray followed. This is where things get unbelievably ugly. Inside the elevator, they continue to kind of scuffle. Ray says something that was kind of taunting her a bit. Then he backs up. She sees Red, rushes in, and then, it happens. Ray loses it for a moment and hits her with a blow to the face. The blow knocks her off balance and as she falls, she hits her head on the handrail in the elevator. After this, she was out cold and unconscious and it took a little while before she came back too. And probably the most disturbing part of the tape is Ray basically dragging her out of the elevator. It seriously looks like something out of a horror movie. Back in 2013, during this anti-bullying campaign, Ray had a quote that really haunts him today. He said, I truly feel like it's a crime if you back somebody into a corner and they feel defenseless. Once again, Ray's old persona comes back to bite him as that's exactly what this looks like. And look bro, this ain't political. So I'm not on the feminist side. I'm not on like the he-man woman hater side. I know those guys will say, well, she backed him into a corner. If, if you telling me you think Ray Rice felt defenseless against his wife who didn't have a single weapon Weapon, who is clearly bigger stronger and more powerful for, like get out of here with that that's bs bro this whole situation is 1000 percent inexcusable i think this is a good time to say that the way i was brought up bro you never put your hands on a woman that's some weak shit that i don't and will never respect with that said if this happens once i don't believe you're irredeemable because you made a terrible 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 mistake i do believe in second chances and i do believe good people make bad decisions and make bad mistakes sometimes. I feel like that's an inherent part of being human. But the other part of being human is actually striving to be better. So just in case you can't tell with how I'm conveying the story, I just wanna let people know exactly where I stand on this situation. Now let's move on. Originally, only one half of the tape leaked, the aftermath. It looked 
really bad, but without the first part of the footage, it wasn't enough to completely unravel Ray's carefully woven persona. The incident was originally called, quote, a very minor physical altercation, and it was pretty much treated like that for a while. See, the full tape didn't surface until a full seven months later. Ray and Janae had gotten married during that seven months, a move that some people felt like was just them trying to get out in front of the media storm and then also this could help prevent Janae from having to testify against Ray in court. So that's one way to look at it. The other way would be maybe after this terrible, terrible incident, they knew that even this wasn't going to break them apart and it was ready to go through everything that was going to have to go through to stay together as the world tried to tear them apart. So they just decided, you know what, let's go ahead and get married right now. We're going to stand together. We're going to get through this. That's just another way to look at it, you know. Now, before the full tape dropped, the NFL actually suspended Ray Rice for the first two games of the 2014 season. When TMZ dropped the full tape, Ray Rice's life changed in an instant. His good guy persona now played against them as people felt they were fooled. They were lied to. And he created this energy of like, oh, so he was just trying to hide who he really was the whole time. That's why he was doing this. You know what I'm saying? This goes back to my earlier point that that whole good guy persona in this situation actually ended up playing against him. It only heightened the backlash because people were so shocked. Ray Rice was now public enemy number one and the NFL couldn't have anything to do with him. So they suspended him, again, this time for the rest of the season. Then to take it a step further, the Ravens actually terminated his contract so he was waived now, even if he was reinstated by the league, he wouldn't have a team to go to. And let's be real, he was an aging running back who was coming off his worst year of his career and a hip injury. So this was always going to be the end. Like nobody was going to sign him after this. During the aftermath, Ray hired a PR specialist, held a press conference, and did the usual dance we see from athletes, politicians, and celebrities. Unfortunately for Ray, the press conference didn't exactly go over well. It came across as a tone-deaf kind of selfish attempt to quickly restore his image so that he could just continue his career without actually addressing the issue. It was way too soon, and Ray later admitted this himself. He said at that point he was more focused on saving his career than saving his marriage and he grew to resent that version of himself because of it we all know there are other guys in the league who have committed crimes just as bad or even worse as what ray rice did the issue is the tape like again i, I hate to keep saying it but narratives bro narratives are everything and the fact that that tape exists and came out nothing you say after this is ever going to tell a more powerful story this is a lasting image that you're probably not going to be able to ever get past the nfl understood that and once that tape dropped there was pretty much no chance dude was ever going to get another carry in the league ray rice lived a long life of tragedies and triumph but his biggest mistake was caught on video and circulated for the whole world to see. And for an aging running back, there was no recovering from that. He and his wife were young, and I know nobody watching this video has ever been in a bad place in their relationship. Just so happened with Rand Janae, their moment was really dark, and then on top of that, it was broadcast for the world to see. And I gotta say this, man, hats off to them for staying together it's been what like six seven years and we all know janae had a perfect opportunity to leave and you know dedicate her life to making his miserable like some women do that and then their life ends up being miserable as well then that collective misery rubbed off on the kids she decided to see all the good things that ray rice is and not judge him on his worst moment can we as a society do the same thing Today, they've got a couple of kids together and through hard work on their relationship and counseling, they figured it out, man. Relationships are hard. People make mistakes. And if you're famous, that mistake could cost you your career and your livelihood. Fortunately for Ray, he won a grievance against the NFL for wrongful termination. The reason being because they punished him twice for the same act, which is illegal. Today, he's become an advocate against domestic violence and seems to have found uh, like a bigger calling in his life. And he seems happy, bro. He seems like he's in a good space. So that's good. After the incident, it was nearly a full year before Ray would come back out of the house. He was embarrassed about the shame that he brought on his family and the pain he caused the woman he loved but he slowly found small pockets of people who accepted him and were willing to give him a second chance, including a workout class with a bunch of stay-at-home moms and dads who invited him in with open arms. 
After being in locker rooms for so long and now basically being exiled, I'm pretty sure that community and camaraderie for him went a long way. I didn't go extremely deep into Janae's side of the story as this video is about the career of Ray Rice, but I gotta once again send a shout out to her for sticking with Ray through this mistake and keeping her family together. Ray talked a lot about how much he hated himself after this incident. And let's be honest, if Janae doesn't stay by his side and keep his kids in his life and do all of the things that she was able to do, he could have gone down an extremely dark dark path but fortunately both of them together were able to go on a path of healing and today they're in a better place than they ever were before he's finally kind of starting to make appearances again and fans are giving him a warm welcome so you know that's kind of nice to see and even though Ray Rice was only afforded one mistake before he had nearly everything taken away from him if you listen to the man speak he'll tell you somewhere down the line everybody was saying does he deserve a second chance for football and this this that and the other I actually got my second chance, Absolutely. right here. 